Hey, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. Hope you brought a broom. It's a mess in here. I need to get this front clip prepped and ready to put back on the car, because once that big block's in, I need it for fuel. Yep, wiring, great. Oh yeah, cooling system too. I don't know, there's, there's, there's a lot that I need this on the car to do the rest of the things for the stuff. So that means we gotta cut out some of this rust and rot, try to patch in some new metal to rusted metal. Yep, and then maybe Fox Teen a match some sort of paint, not likely, and then clean it, you know, tss, 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 the right way. Let's get started, because there's a lot to do. Really quick, I want to thank Limbo for sponsoring today's video. Limbo is a maintenance management software program, and you, the viewers, actually recommended Limbo to Vice Grip Garage. And what's coincidental about that is you guys don't know this, but I actually have almost two decades experience with similar software programs. So I agreed to, you know, test on it. Limbo is very, very simple to use. It can lower your labor hours, it can increase your productivity and lower your maintenance costs. If you're a maintenance manager, for example, no more emails, text, 394 phone calls. Just set up your tasks, assign them, and the software is gonna follow up for you and make sure everyone's doing their job. And even better yet, if you're a technician, you all know paperwork is just, help me, help. Well, it's gone. All the pertinent information comes right to your pocket computer box you do your thing, it shoots right to your boss's desk, and you're done. And again, I tried this out myself, and if I can get through it, you guys, it's easy to use, trust me. And I mean, even if you're hanging harder than a wrecking ball on a Monday morning, you can get through this with ease. Oh. Turn, the, turn the lights, shut the, shut the lights off. They're, there could be no light. So if this sounds right up your alley, go on ahead and check out Limble. I put a link down there in the description for you. You just gotta click on it, basically. And thanks again to Limble for supporting the channel and helping us build independence. Now let's get back to some, you know, professional body work. I was really excited to dig this out again and get started on it. And then after I hooked my peepers on it, I was not excited to start on it again. I had forgotten just how rusted and rotten basically all of this is. And to do this correctly, you need to put it on the car, your fenders, shim everything up, have the full weight of the car on the ground, get your door gaps right, measure for your hood gaps. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just patch them right here off the car and guess. And then we'll clean up the front firewall, the radiator support, front cowl, fronter, Hold her on her where the radiator is the front of the, you know. We're gonna clean that up too. I might take these hood hinges off. Got some other stuff to do there, but let me just show you how bad this is. So the drinker side here, we got a pretty decent part right there, but then this is split all the way up to there. Just cut my finger open. I don't have much for inner fender well bolts. In fact, I only have maybe this one. This is so far rotted all the way up into here that this is just rolled in on itself. So that's fine. It also looks like this had an electrical fire at some point. That's really surprising. The good news is this is the original fender. That's nice. This one's been replaced on, I don't know when. I would assume back in a one when they put this paint job on here. Similar greatness along here. No bolt provisions other than this one. But this particular side, you know, some ting long seems to be missing here. So with the rot and rips in these, they're just floppier than John Goodman's neck. So I think what we gotta do here is just yes, right here and just try to put some metal in. And the reason I'm doing this is I need the bolts on the bottom to bolt these in because I don't want these just flapping and flipping around while we're out there doing burnouts. This one I had the torch off. 
but even though the provisions are here, there's really not much holding in there. So I found these patch panels here. These are actually nice Dynacorns from a Chevelle restoration that I did off the channel. So these are nice thick gauge. And basically what we're after is these provisions here with a little bit of support. And then I'm gonna gain at least one bolt for the inner fender well. And we might have to make something up in here because on the drinker side, I'm gonna have fuel pressure regulator mounted to it. So it, I don't want it doing this. And then over here on the captain side, I think I'm gonna have power steering reservoir. And I don't know what else. There's stuff over here as well. Wiring, I think. Yep. That goes into the and the don't know what that means, but just nod and go with it. So I think first step is let's just snap off all of these bolts down here that are trying to hold this stuff on and get this all just separated into separate pieces. You know, the whole town said that I should have used red, but guess who it looked good to? Oh, easy now, big guy. Ah, oh, it's tickling my brainstem. Get out of here. Well, I'm only bleeding so far, so everything seems to be going fine today. There's them little buggers right there. Yep. Yeah, yep. Sure, that one's off. Yep. Mm -hmm. 19 of you just, oh, 18 of you just commented. Why don't you just put a new fender on it and be done? I can't. Replicating 19 years patina on this fender? Possible. Unless, you know, Rembrandt and a whole bunch of wine. That would be fun. This has already had a patch panel on it before. I'm gonna have to try to line this up, but I need to get above that patch panel. But I gotta shrink up the edges a little bit so I can fit my other piece over that. So I'm gonna take my 16 ounce ball peen Tanya 200, and we just wanna really gently massage in the edges here. After my third rusty deep cut, I found these things that go on your mitts and they're kind of nice actually. Hmm. Well, this isn't quite right yet, but it gives me an idea where I could just mark this so we know where to hack off the old stuff and now we're gonna have plenty of new material. Real life, you would do similar, but you'd use some robotic fingers, clinkos, and then you can mark it up and then you could decide to butt weld it overlap weld it or you can lap weld it which is they got a machine that and it makes a little that this lays over top you can even glue them in nowadays but anywho we're not going to do that my plan because i got that rear quarter panel i got to fix too is i think we're actually just going to pop rivet this panel on and that's more in line to how this car is looking and that'll give us that aircraft kind of industrial look. And that's exactly how I'm going to fix that rear quarter. That piece is just flapping. We're just going to do this with pop rivets. And then that'll hold that on. So if I welded this in and bondoed it and made it look nice, clearly that, you know, doesn't really go with just everything. So now I'm just going to mark this quick. And then we're gonna, yes! That'll work out fine and dandy. See, here's that other patch right there. So she's already been patched once. Here's where the new sheet metal comes up to. So if we cut it right here and get rid of, I'm assuming this is just heavy bondo and probably also pop rivets. We can get rid of all this stuff. Plus, I could take this sheet down to the Hardmore store, see if I could find any paint to kind of ish match this because then we're going to lay down some gray primer some white primer and then a cloche -ish blue and then we're just gonna scratch her up and try to get it to match ish even though we have it pop riveted on and then it'll kind of look like you know that's the way it was done i don't know 26 months ago maybe it was three christmases <laughs>
every stinking time. So the inner support here, completely rotted. So that's fine. We don't need that where we're going. Now I can fit that piece in here better. You can see there's the mark there. And somewhere up here was the other one. So now we can lay that in and we got enough lip here where we can lay that piece over, drill in some holes and pop riveter. And then we're just gonna eyeball her at this point. We do have this other chunk for reference. So if I need to measure from here to this hole, which the patch panel has that same, that's for the inner fender well. That'll give us a good enough idea. What's gonna happen if this is too long or too short is if it's too short, the fender will look sucked in compared to the door because I'm gonna have to stretch it to get the bottom bolt in. If it's too long and we bolt this in, this is gonna bow out. Either case, I really don't think it matters. Well, I think I got her, you know, about where I want it. Subscriber sent me a whole box of these robotic fingers. Thank you. Coming in handy. I measured it, and I also, if I lay this on here and shoot the eyeballs down it, it's looking good enough for the girls we date, basically. And if there's one thing I know when I close my eyes, fellers, it's a Chevelle door gap, and that's pretty close. So I think what I'm gonna do now is just run some holes through here and we'll start pop riveting this thing on here, I suppose. Yeah, it's that time. Okay, let's get started then. It looks, you know, not good, but I'm liking it. Went ahead and took the body hammers to it. Got all this rolled in like you would do if you're, you know, actually doing a restoration. This is a restoration. Got the rivets all the way in around. And then I actually hacked out a piece over here, you know, out of the good stuff, we'll call it. Used that as a backing plate and popped a couple in there. Now we've got less floppage. She's, you know, it's about 39.62% better, but good enough. As long as this kind of sort of this matches, which I think it'll be good. So now I'm just gonna tape this off and lay down, this is close, but I think I have some gray primer I wanna put in here. Actually, I might put some brown first, then gray. Then I'm gonna go try to find some blue and then we're gonna scratch through all of it. So hopefully we can get some brown, gray, and I don't know, get some barbed wire out, whip it a little bit, dig some screwdrivers through it, start sanding in a spot. I, you know, just like that. Going in, engaged. Oh yeah, that's completely wrong. There we go. And then just bring in some brown over the top, you know, just like this. Sure. Perfect. While this is eating over here, I think I'm gonna load this up in the truck, run her down to the spray wash and just <laughs> stop by the hardware store, see if I can get a blue that's completely wrong. And then by the time I get back, we can <laughs> Well, without getting too carried away or picky, this uh, Duplicolor, I think it's an old Ford engine color, is probably going to be the closest. And remember that everything's going to be clear coated, but it's not going to match that good, but that's definitely too bright. And the fireball color is definitely too bright, but it's just, it's going to have to be what it is. So I'm going to coat this down lightly, and then we'll start sanding on this and see if we can get kind of a look to her. Got this guy laid up here. Basically, I'm gonna do the same exact process. This one's a little bit trickier because 
The back support is just hecta all the way off. So we don't have any judgment there on where the bottom of the fender would sit. So I'm gonna have to go off of this hole. And again, you know, real life, this would be on the car. So you'd have rocker panel door gap here to kind of but we're gonna you know do it the right way here so i'm gonna knock this guy out and i also started sanding i decided to keep this a black fender because this is already made into so many different models and pictures and t-shirts and artwork and you name it and the black fenders on it this is independence this is the way it is we're gonna leave it but i wanted to put some more scratches in here and get these stars to kind of come out a little bit so people realize that it was all you know blue and stars at one point and then when we put this patch in here i'm just going to continue the black down here but of course we'll have those rivets across there this side over here was tacky so i took a screwdriver drove in some nice deep scratches here and then these scratches are 80 grit I'm going to let this finish drying. Now when I come back and sand, we can kind of exaggerate some of these scratches a little bit more. And it's not going to look probably even close to this, but just so it kind of has some sort of age to it. And that dried a whole lot darker than on my test panel, by the way. It's actually a really nice blue, to be honest. And then you can see the dark. This is where that brown is at under here. And you can see the brown primer there. So a guy's going to try to get that to shoot out a little bit. We've got some down here. But so I'm going to keep working back and forth here. And I'll check in with you guys in a bit. And I'm going to bring in that front piece over here. Start grinding on it. Get some rust in my lungs. And then I think we're just going to black on that. I don't know why I'm pointing here. Because there's it's not even here yet. But got this one spritzed up this will dry a semi-gloss but i've got gray primer i just spackled in some blue and then put the black over because you know that's black and then i'll do the same thing as basically this one over here this one's pretty much i think this is where i'm going to leave it so we've got different scratches screwdriver drill bit leatherman sandpaper you name it and then these marks here that make it look like these were kind of weeping down, see that? So when this fender's up, that's using a lot of pressure on this finger, rolling the sandpaper and going straight up and down like this, really hard. Just push really down in her and that'll make these grooves. So I'm gonna to try to retain that so when we clear it, although it looks like obviously this was patched, it's gonna make it look like it was a long time ago. Yeah, I think I'm okay with the blues not matching because that again makes sense with that scenario. Same over here, the blacks aren't going to match, but I'll do the same. We're going to try to, probably not so much scratches. I'm not sure what happened on this side, but this looks like barbed wire fence to me. But anywho, we'll probably just do some more sanding. And I got into this quite a bit, but I, this is where I want to leave it. There's still enough black. There's enough blue behind it. And our feller could tell it was clearly blue. And then we got the stars just shooting out. Broke out the big guns on this side. We've got some fingernails, bottle cap to a PBR, 120, 400 grit, a little bit of 80. But I think I got her mixed in right where I want her to be. So fenders are done. That's great. Not so good and expensive news. Is this rad support? I don't think is going to work. I was just going to rust treat it and rattle can it, but none of these are going to come off. They're just spinning, which means I'm going to have to cut them. And then none of this is going to fit right. The inner fender well, it slides in here and gets sandwiched on both sides. It's completely rotten all the way around. This body mount here it's not even, I'm not even sure how it's on here. I think this one bolt maybe is holding that on. So as much as I don't want to spend the money, I think I'm going to have to two day or maybe even overnight this main part here. And then the rest of this, I'll just kind of keep and bolt on. And hopefully I can get 
these little bottom pieces out without busting them up but it's hard to say it just would be pointless to try to save this at this point it's all bent up too I'm not quite sure what happened there but yeah. so waiting for more parts so I was able to get some of this stuff here ordered a couple days not quite sure over here I'm getting to work on this. I'm probably not going to film a lot of the paint just because it's actually a lot of tedious taping and back taping and sanding and but I'm going to give you the gist here. This is a test panel. Don't don't panic on me now. Uh, putting some red down again trying to get close and then I'm going to come in and do some Fox Tina work so heavy scratches sanding stuff like this. This was a white panel that I painted so you can see I'm going to blend all the stuff right back in. So I've got some white laid down right now up there. I've got some white laid down back here. This is kind of unique. This is almost like a tattoo. Guy just can't get rid of it, but I'm gonna fog in some white around it. Same here, we'll sand everything back down in. Then I'm gonna tape off the white, lay the red in, pull all the tape off, and then I'm gonna sand the whole top in one shot. And then if this red over here turns out okay, which I think, I think it's gonna, I mean, that's about as close as I'm going to get, I think. Then I can come in and back more red in, you know, here, obviously there. The great thing is, I don't have to set any of this up. We've got gray, we've got white, we've got this rust color, the original brown behind it. So instead of having to lay multiple colors down, they're basically already here. So when I sand this up, we're going to get into actual rust color and all those other colors there. So. That makes it a little bit faster, but it's still a lot of taping and time. So to match the front fenders, I did a couple test shots here and it's working. So I'm going to put rivets all the way through here, down and down like this. That'll hold that in. And it's already, you know, just with, what have I got in here? 49? No, that's not right. Six rivets. It's already tremendously better. Couldn't quite get this gap out of here and it was getting ready to detach up here. So this is about as close as we're going to get, but that should hold for now. Unfortunately, when this tire blows and that belt comes out, this is probably the first section to just eject. Hopefully the whole thing rips off and then I can just come in and wire it up or zip ties or copper wire or something to hold it back on. Before I go today, I'm going to show you the inside. Here's a sneak peek. Can't really see. Good enough. Andy, remember Andy, he did the bars on the 777? He got 10 from the doors, the back. Looks amazing. Now I asked you guys in the last video what we should do with the paint here, and 98.72% of you said, touch it up a little, but leave the patina. And we haven't sanded it yet but man you guys nailed it you never let me down so now i'm taping off the white we just did i'm gonna lay in some red it'll look like this until we get sanded and then back here got to be a little bit more careful on this side because of those i want to keep all this stuff i don't know it's just a lot of character this side's not so bad as far as body damage goes so i think we're going to leave all of this do some red here. Well, maybe I will put some, yeah, I'll put a little red there and there. And maybe we can cover up some of that rust. This is a patch panel that was put in. And this patch, speaking of them, got plenty. We got this all pop riveted in and it's solid. So I don't know if the word is ironic or coincidental. So we're gonna call it ironidentally. But if you look close, there's old pop rivets in here. So that's how the previous patch, chiz, were put on the car. So we're just, you know, we're bringing it right back into how it was. Oh, I do have a couple left, I guess, right there. This side's coming along. I got, I think most of this sanded out where I'm gonna leave it. Just enough primer and rust and different colors kind of showing through. Started in up here as well. Got some of that gold coming through, primer. And then on this side, I'm having a little bit more of a hassle. Not sure why, but 
I got uh, 80 grit out now, so I can get into this primer a little bit more in a couple different spots. These are all high spots anyway. So by taking that 80 grit, not only am I bringing that color up, but I'm knocking this down for when I come over with that clear. It's not, I mean, obviously it's gonna be bumpy and all that, but it'll be a little bit better. So like this spot right here, for example, I'll take this 80 grit and we'll work this down. I'll stop about there, come over with 400, and that's how I bring that color in underneath of it like that. So this side's coming there. This is all needs cleaned up, but there's quite a bit of gold and primer in here. Gonna keep going. I got at least probably three or four more hours, probably on the bottom on this side. And the deck lid here yet, I haven't touched it all. But it's gonna look, it's gonna look really good when it's done. So Jason, who's here for another project, which I can't show you right now, He's coming in here with his special independence frame rust mix concoction, which is candy thinner or reducer, I believe, and uh, literally scrapes some rust and dirt off the frame. And then he's coming back in and adding a bunch of accents to some of the stuff in here and just, you know, making it shoot out at your peepers. Just looks phenomenal. Guessing he's gonna probably come over in here a little bit. I don't know though. He's uh, been painting for a very long time, so I trust him. He's just gonna do his thing. Still working on the trunk. Very carefully etching out these paint rings, one at a time. Get them to come back out kind of like this. This side's done here. So we got a lot more color, but you know the drill by now. So nearing an end, I got that stripe in the middle up there to do and some touch-ups here and there. And I think we got her licked. You probably noticed I didn't tape any of the glass off. I just find it easier to come back with some quad zero steel wool. And you gotta clean up the glass anyway, right? So that's what I'm doing here. Spray away, steel wool. Same thing back here with the stainless. I'll just come back with the steel wool, clean it up. All right, let's look at the interior. I can't wait to show you guys any longer. Look how awesome this looks. I took it over to Andy's and I said, just simple metal. And this is what he came up with in the back. It can all come apart. There are access panels basically if you need to get in there. But wait, just wait until you see these door panels, fellers. I just can't believe it. And you got to see these in person. I'm sure this is doing it no justice. These door panels look absolutely insane. They're so, I mean, I just, I can't even think of a word right now. And again, I said, just give me, you know, just a sheet and put the handles on. He put that one on backwards, but that's okay. I forgive him. It's just, he does such good work. Well, guys, I think that's where I'm going to end this one here. I still got a couple hours of work left, but... I just want to say big thank you to Andy. Really blessed to have that guy. He always helps me out with literally no notice. It's just like, hey, and he's like, yeah, bring it over. And also Jason, who's been here helping me on this project and another project you guys are going to see pretty soon. That's it's going to bottle your mind. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.